Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good week and everything's going okay. In this video you join me in my spare room, which really doubles up as a bit of a hobby room really to be honest, and uh, in the winter nights when uh, there's not much to do outside, um, I repair vintage watches. Uh, would you believe, I'm, I'm a man of very few talents. So anyway, in this video uh, we're going to get onto the next stage of our um, red wine. It's gone through now the malolactic fermentation, which has taken about a month. It's been really interesting, it's been an education as to how long the malolactic fermentation takes but we added it on the 6th of October it's now 8th 9th of November and it's finished it stopped bubbling I can probably safely say that the malolactic fermentation is complete and now we're going to get on to the aging process what does that mean? Well, we're going to rack it into fresh carboys or demijohns. We're going to add some potassium metabisulfite so that we uh, kill off any uh, bacteria that might be present in here. We're also going to prevent um, acetobacter from creating any vinegar or acetic acids in the uh, the wine that we're going to rack. Um, acetobacter is just present in the air. You can't get rid of it. So um, you just got to make sure that it doesn't take hold and, and produce sort of horrible acetic um, type uh, tastes and things like that. So we're going to do that uh, and also the most exciting thing is that we're going to have a bit of a taste. Now I'm really hoping that uh, it tastes quite different from the uh, flavour that we had when we sampled it after the primary fermentation where all those malic acids were still present. Um, the secondary fermentation hopefully will have converted those malic acids into lact lactic acids. So fingers crossed, wish me luck, let's do it. Okay, I've tried to be a little bit more organised than uh, I normally am. Um, so what I've got is I've got my um, little pair of scales there. I've got some oak chips because I want to experiment with um, flavouring the wine with oak. Uh, not all of it, just some of it, so I can sort of compare and contrast. Um, I've got a wine glass because I just want to taste it, to be honest. Um, I've got a fresh carboy, uh, which has been sterilised and cleaned. And I've also got my uh, simple siphoning uh, device, uh, which I can use to um, rack off uh, from one container container into the, the next. So I think I think I've got everything organised, as well as the potassium metabisulfate. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to be adding that to the new carboy in a ratio of roughly one gram per 10 litres. And that should give me um, a rough sort of concentration of about 60 parts per million, which I think is about right at this stage because we want to kill off any um, bacteria that we've got present, still present in the, um, the wine which we're racking. I also want to ensure that any acetobacter, which is just present in the air, um, doesn't sort of get any kind of grip on the uh, the wine. And that, if it does, that's basically what turns wine to vinegar. So we want to get rid of any acetobacter. And uh, we just, yeah, we just want a sterilise container, really. So that's, uh, that's essentially what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to weigh out some potassium metabisulfate and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, moment of truth. I'm just going to take the stopper off here and put that down. Um, what I will do is I'm just going to take a small sample and I've got to be a little bit careful here because if I shove this siphon all the way down, it's going to just overflow. So I'm just going to suck a little bit up and I'm just going to put some into the wine glass so I can have a bit of a taste. And that would be good. Now, with this siphon, it's quite good because you can either have the uh, two carboys uh, on the same level and literally just keep pumping away like so. And it will, you know, eventually fill up. Or once you've got the tubes all nice and uh, full like it is now, what you can then do is just put the jar that you're filling onto the floor or lower and it will literally just siphon away. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put this carboy onto the floor and it's filling up nicely. Okay, well, I'm not quite sure whether I showed that brilliantly well for you, but anyway, we basically transferred uh, from one carboy to the other. And uh, here it is. It's got all the oak chips obviously floating uh, to the top now, and it is um, slowly bubbling away. Um, that is literally just the, I think it's just the metabisulfite reacting, producing the... Um, 
sulfur dioxide, I think, as far as I can see, uh, which is good really because we've got a little bit more of an air gap now um, because we can't transfer all the liquid. Uh, so we've got a little bit more of an air gap here. So um, as long as the oxygen is, uh, you know, somewhat displaced. It's not going to displace at all, but um, that will certainly help with uh, trying to keep any um, acetobacters down as well. So um, that's uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. So I think what we're going to do is well, I'm just going to put a, a date on the, um, the jar just so that uh, we can know when you know we started this process off. And then uh, really all it needs doing is um, just leaving it really. You can imagine that in a, in a professional winery, uh, unlike us here, they're going to um, have this wine, I don't know, aging away in oak barrels for, you know, six months, a year, two years, however long. Um, but it'll be interesting to see because this carboy here has got the oak in. We've got exactly the same one without any oak in at all. And I don't know if you remember in a previous video, I said that uh, it would be an interesting experiment to see uh, what the wine would be like if we left it on the gross lees, which some people say you shouldn't do, some people say you should do it. Um, so I've got some other um, red wine containers uh, behind me um, where they were left on the gross lees. Um, and just so that at the end, when we come to bottle it, we can taste them all and just sort of see which process was the uh, the best one to follow. And uh, I'm hoping there'll be a little bit of difference in taste. Um, so we can um, go from there. So, you know, in future years, we, we know which process is the best. And of course, I'll take you uh, on the journey as well. So um, that's that now, but it was one really important thing to do, and that is to um, to taste it. Now I've got my small uh, glass of wine here. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't going to be like the finished uh, product by any means at all, because uh, it's gone through its malolactic fermentation. So I'm really hoping, compared to the taste uh, after its primary fermentation, we will have got rid of those... Um, uh, malic acids and gone for lactic acids. It was a very peculiar taste, um, tasting red wine with malic acid in it. It, was, uh, it wasn't right at all. So uh, this would be really interesting. Now, it's probably uh, going to have a slight, a very slight fizz to it. Really, really fresh wines tend to have a little bit of a fizz to it. That actually might be why uh, my airlock is bubbling away here because, you know, if you've got something um, carbonated, if you add some sugar uh, to it, it all froths away uh, vigorously. And it's just because those little granules are creating the centers uh, for bubbles to form. Well, exactly the same thing happens um, with, with wine um, if it's a little bit carbonated, which um, it probably will be. So um, that, uh, that might be explaining why our airlock here is, is bubbling slowly away. You can just see it. I don't know if you can see it in the picture. It's going to bubble any second. There we go. So this might be a little bit fizzy, um, but that's that's perfectly okay. So let's give it a go. I'm really hoping we're going to get some um, nice smoother lactic acids coming through. Anyway, here it goes. Bottoms up. Mm. Yeah, that's really, really different compared to what it was um, a month ago. Yeah, that's, that's well on its way. We've got no um, unpleasant tastes there at all. Uh, we've got, um, it is very, very, very slightly sparkling, but that will definitely go over the um, the next few months or so. Um, but yeah, we've, we've definitely got a change in taste. Uh, we've got those um, smoother, smoother lactic acids, I would say. Uh, and I'm not a professional at this at all. It's just that it's a very obvious taste. Imagine biting into an apple, for example. It's got that sort of sharp taste after its uh, primary fermentation. That, that sharpness is gone now. Um, and I'm imagining that that's because that malic acid is now gone. And instead, we've got the, uh, the lactic acids coming through. I'll just have another taste. <laughs> Quite good, actually. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it needs to age now. Um, it's a little bit too new, which is not surprising. Um, so hopefully, let's revisit this in another um, few months time. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have something that is approaching, uh, you know, a, a, a product that we can bottle. Right, I've got to clear all this up now. Now, um, first of all, thank you very much for uh, bearing with me whilst I go on this uh, journey of discovery uh, to try and uh, make red wine from our um, harvests. 
it's uh, by no means a... Uh, I was going to say it's by no means an educational thing. I suppose it is in a funny sort of way, but it's um, it's partly I'm educating myself on how to do this. Uh, it's it's also an opportunity to ask people for help because um, people watching this video hopefully will have a lot more experience than I have in making red wine. And if you've got any tips and things like that, then definitely put it in the comments below. Uh, it's a learning curve and we can all learn together. It's really good. Just before I, I go, I'll just show you what's left at the uh, bottom of the carboy we've just racked and uh, that is um, all the sort of old dead um, yeasts I suppose and uh, things like that uh, anyway I'm glad we've racked it so um, that's not contaminating our um, wine from going forwards so a huge thank you to my patrons uh, which really help this channel out um, as I've said in previous videos you get other uh, background um, information and fact sheets and background videos and things like that uh, which may be of interest to you so maybe I'll catch you over on the patreon site as well but uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one in the meantime have a super week and I'll see you later bye for now